From the festival floor, I'm Danny Washington, and we are here at the USA Science and Engineering Festival. It is Saturday, the first day open to the public here at the Expo, and we're so excited. Today is presented by Lockheed Martin, and I am stoked because I'm sitting next to astronaut Jessica Muir, and we're so happy to have you here at this Expo this year. I mean, wow. Is this your first time coming? Actually, my second. I was here two years ago as well. Excellent. How was that experience for you? I was so impressed by how everything was organized and the impact it had and just seeing the expressions on all the kids' faces. I remember the, the, the big, biggest memory I had, they had these baseball ca cards with all of the scientists on them. And so I had a little card with my name and hometown and the kids were so excited. They were running around collecting them and, oh wow, that's you, can you sign this? So it was, they do a great job with this festival. So I'm excited to be here again this year. Now, I know that you wear a lot of different hats and you've had a prolific career thus far. Can you tell us a little bit about your background and how you came to be an astronaut? Sure. So I was a scientist before this job. I was working in academia, so working at a university doing research, and I was studying the physiology of, or of organisms in extreme environments. So I was really interested in these extreme environments like the Antarctic, um, also especially to do in environments that animals uh, are struggling to find enough oxygen. So for example, a breath hold diver. Just like us, there are a lot of animals that need air to breathe, right? And so if they're dependent on the ocean in order to catch their food, then they have to dive to do that. So the longer you can hold your breath and stay underwater, the more successful you're gonna be in exploiting that environment. So I was very interested in studying diving animals. I did research in the Antarctic studying emperor penguins and trying to understand how they can dive for as deep and as long as they can. So an emperor penguin can dive for 30 minutes on a single breath. 30 so minutes. So imagine, 30 minutes wow. on one breath. And I also studied elephant seals in California. They can dive for two hours on one breath. And they're not just resting. They're down there swimming along, foraging, catching fish, exercising, really. And they're doing that all while holding their breath. So they really have to use their oxygen source effectively. So those were the kind of questions that I was really interested in, in finding the answers for. So we would actually do field work, we would put little instruments on the animals, on them in the wild, in the Antarctic, while they were diving, in order to measure those types of variables. Then I studied high altitude animals. So the same kind of thing, if you live at high altitude, you don't have to hold your breath, but of course there's not a lot of oxygen not there a lot to of oxygen, breathe. Exactly. So I studied the bar-headed goose. It's the species of goose that migrates over the Himalayas twice a year. So the tallest mountains on the planet, and it's flying. They're flying over the mountains. They're flying over the Himalayas. So trying wow. to understand how can this bird, how can they support that? How can their body support that? So for that work, we actually trained geese how to fly in a wind tunnel so that we could measure all these different aspects of their bodies, of their physiology while they're flying to better understand that. So that's what I was doing. I, I was very content in that career. And of course, I had wanted to be an astronaut since I was five years old. So of I course. always had that dream and I'd been involved in all these other NASA related activities along the way. But I actually felt really lucky that I had found this other career. I knew that there was such a slim chance that I could ever become an astronaut. I knew it wasn't going to happen. And so I felt really lucky that I had this other career. And of course, that's always when it does happen, right? When you already are when you found something else. It. Exactly. And so then when I was offered the chance to do this job, of course, I couldn't turn it down. <laughs> so that makes sense, though. You were studying animals in extreme environments, whether underwater and, you know, deep below the surface or up high in the atmosphere. I mean, that makes right. sense. And then you're transitioning that into space, which is also right. an extreme environment. Yeah, now I will be the animal in the extreme environment oh that will be studied. I will be instrumented just like my animals were. So I guess it's my turn. Yep, the tables have turned on you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I love it. So I know you're presenting tomorrow, Sunday, uh, on stage. So you have a huge stage show. What are you looking forward to doing up there? Really just interacting with the students and hopefully engaging them a little bit and just trying to share some of the experiences that I've had because, you know, I know that I'm one of the few lucky people that gets to do this and I think it really is an important part of our mission to be able to share that with everybody. You know, hopefully even if just meeting these people and showing them some pictures today and sharing that experience and hopefully encouraging them and making them realize, you know, it, it sounds quite trite, but ever since I got this job, I say it often. I mean, it's really proof that dreams can come true. I mean, I didn't think that my five-year-old dream job could actually happen and it did. So if you set your mind to it, and you work really hard at it and, and have this passion that you're following, then it really can come true in the end. Of course, there's a lot of luck involved as well, and I realize that completely, but hopefully they will get, take something away from the experience as well. Awesome, awesome. And right now you're based in Houston, so are you awaiting a mission, your first mission out to space? 
Yeah, so I was in the class of astronauts that were selected in 2013. There were eight of us. So the first two years, you have astronaut candidate training, where you're really, it's kind of like basic, basic training for astronauts. So you have flight training, you start learning how to use the spacesuit, you start learning how to fly the robotic arm on the International Space Station. You learn all about all the different systems on the International Space Station, since that will be our eventual, our eventual home. And you also take Russian language training, since everybody on the International Space Station has to be able to speak both English and Russian. Wow. So we do, that takes about two years, and then you graduate, and you lose the candidate part, the astronaut candidate part of your name, and you become a real astronaut awaiting for your first mission. So since then, it's been about two and a half years, and I've been working in other jobs than our office. So we will move around a little bit. We'll, we'll maintain proficiency in all those different areas of training, but then we'll also work for different groups at NASA. So one of the things I did a lot of was working in mission control as the capsule communicator, so the person that's in the mission control center talking to the astronauts that are on the space station and different roles like that. Now actually in January I've started this next chapter and I'm in full-time training for a space station mission. Uh, so I am going back and forth between the U.S. and Russia where I'm learning how to fly and learn everything about the Russian Soyuz spacecraft. So I'm assigned right now as a backup for a crew that's launching next summer. And then after that, I don't have an exact launch date yet, but hopefully I'll have a launch date of my own not too long after that, but we'll wait and see when. That's so exciting. Wow. So you're always just on the edge, just waiting and, and keep it moving forward. And it's great that they have you in-house in so you can contribute in other ways. That's right. Yeah. That's awesome. Wow. I'm super impressed. Well, we're really excited once again to have you here. And is there one piece of advice that you would give to a young person who is interested in following your career path? Yeah, I think the biggest thing, you know, of course, to be an astronaut, you do have to have a STEM education. And that's why we're all here. It's so important. Uh, but other than that, I think it's really just important to find what you're truly passionate about. You know, if you're doing something just because you think you should or because somebody else told you to, I don't think you're going to have that passion and that fire behind it, and you won't be truly successful at it. And even more importantly, you won't be happy doing it. So I think that that really is the secret. You know, you hear it all the time, but that passion and then that pers perseverance in order to make it come true. And, and with that, I think you can really accomplish anything. Love it. Well, make sure you check out Jessica tomorrow, Sunday, and watch her stage show. We'll also be posting it online. So follow us on our website, usasciencefestival.org, and of course on social, hashtag SciFest. Thanks, Jessica. Thank you.